Hello and welcome to Congressman Henry Cuellar's Capitol Report. Your voice from Washington for the 28th District of Texas. Every day, taxpayers interact with the federal government on a regular basis, whether it's through the passport services, student loans through the direct loan program to pay for higher education. Every month, we bring home to you the issues that matter the most. And now, here's your update from the nation's capital. Hi, this is Congressman Henry Cuellar, and welcome. Today we have some very special guests, and I would like to introduce them. Uh, first of all, I want to start off with uh, Lillian, Lillian uh, Salerno with the administrator. She's the administra administrator for the Rural Business Cooperative Service at the USDA. And I will uh, go ahead and introduce John, and I want to ask some questions also. John uh, Shoraka, Associate Administra Administrator at the Small Business Administration, and I certainly want to thank both of y'all. Uh, for being here. So Thank we'll you. start off ladies first and uh, sure. tell us a little bit about the USDA. Uh, uh, you know, I know it's a very mm -hmm. versatile agency, probably one of the most versatile agencies uh, that I've worked with. So tell us a little bit what you do and then we'll talk about some questions, uh, talk about some points, how we can help some of the small businesses uh, in District 28 in Texas. Great, great. Hey, thank you for having me here. Thank and uh, I represent the um, United States Department of Agriculture, the mission area called Rural Development, which is for that part of the country, somewhere around 42 million people that live in communities of less than 50,000 people. Um, so the Rural Development Mission Area has uh, three areas of interest. One is for housing for folks, and another one is for utilities, uh, community facilities like uh, firehouses and, uh, and uh, 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 pump systems, and we also do water systems. And then the part that I'm the administrator of is for the businesses. So we give out loans and grants for uh, businesses that are looking for capital and we also have grants and feasibility studies and so we're sort of this mini uh, area in the US government that's just the only federal agency directed for the rural communities which you have a bunch in your district I sure do as you know I represent the area from uh, San Antonio uh, down to Laredo my hometown down to the valley and in between there is a lot of rural development uh, and a lot of small communities and let me tell you the USDA has just done a great job. Uh, I know up there at the um, the state watch, yeah, Paco Valentin, he's yes, done a did. great job. Uh, you know, he's really done a very good job. We're very happy with him. So I certainly want to say thank you for for what you do. Uh, let me just uh, just uh, ask John what he does, and then we'll go into some specifics. Sure. So the small. Thank you for having me. By the way, the Small thank Business you. Administration helps uh, small businesses start, grow, and succeed. Uh, as you know, two out of every three. Um, employee is um, resident or, or is employed by a small business. Um, we at the Small Business Administration have what we call our three C's and a D. Uh, we help with contracts, mm -hmm. federal contracting. Uh, that's my office. That's the office that I'm the associate administrator of. We help with um, credit, small business access to credit. We help with counseling through our district offices or through our small business development centers and our resource partners. Uh, and so those are our three C's. Our last uh, D is in the case of a disaster, we work with the community to provide disaster loans. You know, you scared me. I thought you were talking about my high school grades for a while. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. But uh, thank you, John. Let me, uh, let, let me start off with this. Let, let's assume you had a, uh, a business person that wanted to go ahead and start the process. How would they start with you, with the SBA? And then sure. we'll ask the same question of uh, Sure. Again. So uh, SBA has a lot of resources that are out there available to a business that's either starting or looking to grow. So with respect to counseling, they can either go to our district offices or through one of the small business development centers, which are generally housed at universities. But the thing that I'd encourage is that if the small business or the entrepreneur visits our website, sba.gov, mm -hmm. they can enter their um, zip code and it will give them the resources that are closest to them. Uh, be it a uh, women's business center, be it a small business development center, or be it one of our 68 district offices that are around the country. Alien? Yes, um, so one of our assets, so to speak, is our field office in this. Um, we had about almost 4,000 people in the field mm -hmm. in rural America so that those constituents in those small towns that maybe need a little bit more help going through the system, 
um, that they actually can go to a f an area office. Our, our state office is in Temple, Texas, where Paco mm -hmm. is, where uh, Valentin, our state director, and then he's in charge of all of our area offices. As you know, we also have farm service agency offices yeah. around the country, a lot in Texas. Judy Canales. And Judy Canales yeah, Judy runs Canales. that and used to be in my position yeah. here and uh, uh, have worked with her and she's doing a great job in Texas. And uh, we also well, have- she's a Texan just like She's apt to be a Texan like me. Uh, John is really from the northern part of Texas. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah, wait, wait. And I'm so um, if you're a rural business, and I come from a rural business, I started a rural business in North Texas uh, many years ago before I joined the administration. and. Uh, I know exactly how hard it is when you try to access the federal system and I think what SBA has done a really good job of and, and we've worked as a partner and uh, commerce is this Business USA uh, website portal that's very good and we've all been part and parcel of that and uh, by typing in that zip code it directs you if you're in a rural area straight to an area office of USDA for, for business and so that would be the first place I would start currently if I was uh, looking for access to capital if I was in a rural town. Right. You know, and, and I think both of you hit something that was very important because one of the things that when you deal with the federal government is that, uh, you know, people think it's very bureaucratic. People think it's very hard to um, uh, to actually get the, the assistance. So, and I know this because I used to be a small business owner before I, I got into um, uh, into politics. And so, therefore, it's always that fear. So, can you, uh, you touched upon this, but talk to us a little bit more how you all been able to streamline uh, USDA so it's easier, you know, the easier we can make it for our taxpayers or our customers, the better it is. And then same thing on sure. SBA. Sure. Well, one thing we've done is, is just try to be under the administration, under this administration, it's all about collaboration, trying to make it, you know, collaborative so there's not these silos between, within agencies right. and then between agencies. So we have the intra and the intra. And for me, who had never worked in the federal government when I walked into USDA, seeing how big it is, I was, it's sort of overwhelming as a, just someone trying to get their head around what all we offer. So we offer farm loans, we offer business loans. And so we work very collaboratively with our, our family within USDA. And then we spend a lot of time with, you know, myself and, and John and, and people from SBA over at the White House collabor collaborating on how to deliver services better. And so we have, that's where the uh, Business USA concept came out of. And it's this idea where, I'm not competing with SBA. If we have a constituent that is better served by one of their loan products, we tell them about it and their people do us. In fact, we just held a, a meeting yesterday over there where we just talked about better ways to collaborate. When we have trainings, there are people to come. When, we, uh, when they have trainings, our folks to come because we're all trying to do the same thing, which is provide federal dollars to people who can create jobs. All right. Thank you. John. Yeah, I would add to that, one of the things our administrator always used to say, Karen Mills, was link, leverage, and align. Uh, so not just internally amongst our programs, in other words, our contracting programs, our access to capital programs, our counseling programs, but throughout agencies across the federal government, so that we can leverage our resources and, and take care of our constituents that are out there looking for the services and getting them to the right place. Uh, the other thing that I would add is uh, we always look to reach our I consider them our customers, where they are at, either in, th in the case of their development, are they a startup, are they looking to grow, are they looking for export uh, financing. So look to where they are, both um, in the sense of development as well as geographically. A lot of our customers don't have access to the district office. So we have a lot of training material that's online. Our learning center is geared towards learning about government contracting, uh, learning with uh, how to develop a, a, a business plan. Uh, in my office, which is government contracting, we have a, a numerous uh, um, set of courses around just how to do work with the federal government. Mm -hmm. uh, very basic, uh, but then also more specific uh, uh, topics geared towards even sometimes contracting officers, but it's open to the general public. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, resources that are available just online with respect to training, uh, but also through the district offices. Right. Now, how do y'all handle the, um, uh, you know, the paperwork, you know, because, again, I'm, I'll tell you what I hear, sure. you know, well, you know, it's too much paperwork, you know, the Paper Reduction Act, you know, how do you, how do you deal with the paperwork where you have a process that's simple, 
Uh, and at the same time, nothing against an attorney, so I'm an attorney, but instead of legalize, legalese language, put it in simple English, what I call simple English. How, how do you handle that? Because a lot of folks are, feel that you have to turn in a, a stack of, uh, of paperwork. You know, you still got to provide the accountability, you know, to the yeah. taxpayers' uh, dollars. Uh, but then at the same time, you got to find that balance where it's a simplified, streamlined process. And sure. but why don't we uh, sure. go uh, with uh, sure. John and so then... And then Sure. Obviously, we have certain processes with regards to contracting, for example. There are mm -hmm. certain set-aside programs where you get certified on the front end. Uh, those can be sometimes cumbersome with respect to applying for the, for the uh, um, set-aside program, but we've looked to figure out where we can reduce paperwork, where we can automate uh, mm -hmm. the process. Uh, I will mention also in our lending program, we've looked to eliminate a lot of the paperwork and are continuously looking to find opportunities to eliminate paperwork. And also in our disaster lending program, uh, I know that we get briefed uh, from our disaster folks on a regular basis, the reduction in the number of uh, forms that they have to fill out or the pages that they have to fill out has has been consistent over the years. So both in with regards to reducing the paperwork but also finding opportunities for automation. Right. And, and I, know, I know that every service is different. I know what y'all do is a little different from the yeah. SBA. Um, but uh, let me give you an example. Uh, and I don't know, maybe y'all are doing this or maybe just a little food for thought. Uh, in Texas, some years ago, I used to chair the budget for higher ed in Texas, and we said, how do we simplify? Because if you got 35 institutions in Texas, uh, you know, you have to file a different That's type right. of application. So we came up with what we call the common application. Mm -hmm. Do you all have anything similar, at least intra, intra uh, itself uh, within an agency where you have a common application? Not yet, not yet, but we're... I right, mean, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Absolutely, yeah, I remember when that happened in Texas and I, what a great idea. Uh, so that was you, yeah. now we know. Yeah. Uh, Among <laughs> many other people. <laughs> uh, but we have this opportunity because of the collaborative nature that the agencies are looking at where, you know, the folks who do this kind of, you know, sort of process engineering, how can we make it simpler? And I know SBA's been doing a ton of work on it and our group's been doing a ton of work on it, but we've started in our, um, we call with the comprehensive loan program, the CLP, and it takes a while because mm -hmm. some of these IT systems with the government, you're probably aware, are yeah. legacy systems that you know you have to be able to you know jump onto, and it's not like starting from scratch. Whereas, you know, when you get to start from scratch, it looks a lot different. So we already have the systems with the banks, and we're accountable for that. It's taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. so we can't, it's not like if I was in private sector, I could just jump off and say, okay, we're going to do it this way because I've got $6 billion worth of portfolio that accounts this way, and the other side of the government is making sure that we, uh, you know, we've got to stay prudent and responsible for that money, so we can't just turn it on quite as quickly, but it's certainly something I know under this administration, it's such a, it's a very big priority. What we do have under the Rural Development Mission Area, as you know, we give out grants, and we've given some, certainly in your, uh, well, Y'all have been very good, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> to, you know, because one of our priorities are building the bioeconomy, building, you know, taking advantage of this local foods initiatives, and we're, we're we give grants for that, and under the president's budget now we have this way what's called its consolidated grant program and that's one of the things that you know constituents told us we don't like having to fill out four different grants yeah. and so we're, we're trying but you know we got a long way to go yeah and I appreciate that and, and I understand sometimes you have the IT systems and being a member of the appropriation I understand cost a few dollars to right. to change all that but uh, but I appreciate whatever y'all can do I, I would say that the this administration has been very innovative y'all been very innovative at, at providing better customer service uh, to you know to the customers that we serve so I really appreciate it. so any movement toward that area would be would be good so I appreciate I think you understand what yep. we're saying we <laughs> did that in Texas so I appreciate it John what about y'all in the uh, SBA so we are looking for opportunities, very similar. Obviously, there's always a resource question, there's always a budget question. Yeah. We are looking for opportunities where there are similar programs, especially around contracting as an example, mm -hmm. where you have to fill out similar forms. Are there opportunities to fill them out once and apply for two or three programs? So yes, it's, it's an important initiative that we're working on. Uh, as we talked about, are we there yet? No, there's more work to be done in this regard. I think we always look to see, put ourselves in the mind of the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we best serve the customer, and how do we make it as simple as possible for the customer to interact with us, either through the web, either through our website, it, at, 
when they are available to do it and at, at uh, locations that they are available to do it. So we are looking for opportunities to streamline and also um, use uh, a one-form uh, policy if that's possible. Yeah, a one-stop center is yeah. what we used to call it on financial aid. Yeah, we, we did that actually. I was involved in this one uh, directly was to have a one-stop center uh, because if you're going to apply in the past, you used to apply here, 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 here. So the more we can have a one-stop center, even within an agency or yeah, sure. you know, entry agency, sure. uh, but at least within an agency, I have a one-stop center on that. That, uh, like you said, put yourself in the shoes of those uh, individuals right. on that. Now, let me ask you this question, um, uh, and I'll start with you. Let, let's say you're in uh, Poteet, uh, Texas, yes. uh, and you wanted to start the process, and then I'll ask you mm -hmm. uh, another, you know, let's say in San Antonio, or in, uh, but let's say you're in Poteet, Texas, uh, in San, uh, Strawberry Festival, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of strawberries, big strawberries, <laughs> but uh, you, you, let's say you're uh, somebody in, in Poteet, Texas, small community, how do you get started? I mean, so the viewers, uh, as you know, we, we go all the way from right. San Antonio, about 400 miles or so. How do, we, how do we start the process? If you're somebody, explain the process, as simple, like okay. if I was a sixth sure. grader. Sure, um, so if I'm in Poteet and I wanted to get a, a small business loan, and I would go to my lender, and if I didn't have a lender, I would find one and then see if they participate in the USDA business program. And some of them do and some of them don't, and that's one of the things that we're all trying to do is make sure we have enough lenders giving capital, putting capital into uh, rural America, and right. SBA is helping with that, and of course our, we're, that's where our, our mission is. And once- And, and if I can uh -huh. interrupt, exactly the same situation. We did that in Rio Grande City. Uh, well, we, uh, I was there with Paco, and same thing, the lender was there, USDA was there, and they started a new business, a new restaurant, created all these jobs mm -hmm. in Rio Grande City. So, I mean, I can tell you as a real life story, it does work uh, what, the way you all do. But because those lenders without the USDA guarantee, and, and some of these, they don't have enough, I mean, if they give out $2 million worth of loan, that's their lending limit. And without the government coming in and guaranteeing a portion, they can't give out loans. And so that's that's a very relevant, important mission for small business yeah. and rural. Exactly. And we got to keep it up. We got to give, we have to authorize, we need to make sure that that money's out there or we are really going to dry up that right. business. Small business, they, it may be something where they need a, a capital investment that's in our portfolio, and it may be something smaller that's, that's better for the applicant to have an SBA loan, and so we share that information. We don't say, don't go to SBA. If they only want a $50,000 working capital loan, probably not gonna go to SB to USDA. That's not that's not our mm -hmm. sweet spot. Our sweet spots are big, bigger loans. Our average loan is about $3 million. Right. Um, if they're a grower of strawberries in Poteet and they wanted to turn those strawberries into something with a value add to them, we'd also tell them about our value added producer grants mm -hmm. that we have. And that's uh, a, a way for them to get a grant and turn strawberries into, say, strawberry jam. And if they wanted to do export with that strawberry jam, then we'd tell them about our export partners over here. And so that's how the process is, is to take where they're at, just as John mentioned, and make sure all the federal family gives them the resources they need to succeed. You know, let, let me, before I go to John, uh, <laughs> let's focus on this thing about exports uh, because, um, President's been really good at this export initiative, and, and I've been one of those believers that the more we export, the more jobs we create, and Texas has been actually the number one state in exporting. Talk to us about that, because a lot of people think that people that export are big multi-corporations, but they're actually small, medium-sized yeah. companies that yeah. do that. Yeah. It's so important for the economy. I know you're a big proponent of it. All of us are big proponents of it. This administration has done amazing yes. on it. And I don't know if you know, but there was a, uh, about a month ago, the president announced a Made in Rural initiative. And we are working with the Department of Commerce, and, and who's the lead, and the uh, SBA on taking opportunities. Not We're not talking agricultural exports, which we have this huge foreign ag piece, which is so important to our nation's economy. That's doing great. We're not talking about that. We're talking about that part of the country, rural, that also has a lot of manufacturing, also has a lot of value add industry where they don't think exports. And now we're trying to think. And so what we've done and what the president announced was this opportunity to take 
rural as a place and turn it on and ta start getting those folks to exports. And so we have some listening sessions going on. We're going to have some regional forums, and we're very excited about it. And those regional forums are going to be selected over the next couple of months. Yeah. Hey, well, what's the general rule? 95-5 uh, uh, for 95 percent of your customers are outside the U.S. So if you want to go uh, uh, I don't want to use the uh, the banking issue, but the robbing the banks that uh, somebody said many years ago. But what, when you, if you want to go fishing, go where the fish are at, uh, and uh, ninety five percent of the customers outside the U S. and that's where they can really make the money. And I think what you said is like the, the small business person, and I'm a I'm an entrepreneur of my background, and that idea of export sometimes it looks so confusing and it's some yeah. of the best consistent revenue source you can have as a small business if you just can get over the anxiety about going ahead and and looking at it and there's a you know there's a trade winds conference in san antonio right. and exactly. in may and these opportunities for small businesses are so important and the more we can talk about them i think the better and we're we're actually with paco's help have invited a couple of small businesses to attend and mm -hmm. to to go to that trade winds conference in san antonio some rural businesses that didn't know that there was this kind of opportunity. So we're working closely with SBA and the Department of Commerce on this initiative. And the Import Export Bank comes in yes. into play also. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how, how, how do you handle that? So uh, a couple of things. One is with regards to international trade. We have an Office of International Trade that mm -hmm. focuses on small business and trade overseas. Um, but we have also trade finance products. So I'd encourage you to look into either the district office or again on the website to identify opportunities for that. With regards to lending institutions, one of the things, I also come from small business. I actually owned and operated a, a small business government contracting operation mm -hmm. before I joined the administration. One of the things I found sort of difficult was that you tend to go to your own lending institutions. Right. And sometimes yeah. they don't carry the products that we may have to offer. So it's really important to identify what you're trying to accomplish and which banks may carry our products. One of the great resources is our district offices. They have relationships with the local banks. They know which banks are using which one of our products in which capacity. Uh, so we have contract-based lending, as an example, or we have working capital uh, uh, loans. Um, but not all the banks use all of our products. So I'd encourage uh, uh, the first time SBA or, or USDA user to reach out to the agency to identify which banks really partner up with us and which might be the best match for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so in the exporting part of it, uh, you know, I come from the border, so trade is extremely important. What, what are some of the resources that you, you have for, for so trade? We do have an Office of International Trade. Right. Our district offices uh, across the country have uh, international trade um, representatives, basically technical assistance folks that can provide um, resources, uh, they can provide some knowledge with respect to trade and trade finance, um, and which products really are out there that could assist with respect to trade finance. Okay, good. Now, uh, let me ask you this question. Um, so, let's say I'm a small business person. Um, and what would be the first instinct? What would be the first place that I go? I mean, I, I would assume it would probably be the website or one of the closest offices, but if you're in the rural area, what would be the first thing? Uh, again, let's say you're in uh, Pleasanton, <laughs> or let's say Floresville, uh, Wilson County. Okay, I don't know where. And, and again, I'm, I'm trying to say, you know, I'm trying to ask questions, so if, if somebody's watching this sure. show, sure. Um, you know, I want them to say, oh yeah, this is what I need to do. If they're in a rural area, which for us is a, a area of 50,000 persons or less, then they would call, I mean, they they could Google rural development and we are, our phone number, which I should have had in my head, but I don't have it for Texas. Uh, we'll put it on the screen I later. Will, we'll put it on the screen <laughs> later. And our, our website, uh, if they Google rural development, they'll go to our website. I would encourage them to go to an area office because that's sort of what our asset is, right. if they can walk into an area office. If they can't get to an area office, if they call our area office, that person, we have area specialists that will go over what those opportunities are because there are some that are timely. For example, when I mentioned the value-added producer, that that uh, notice of application is out and it ends at a certain time and if you don't get your application in. And mm -hmm. I, I always am so unfortunate when people, they're coming in the office and maybe they just finished planning season and they're coming in and we've just closed something. Mm -hmm. it, it's just so, you know, it makes me so, uh, I just wish we could do better because the constituent, if they would have known about that, they could have applied. And there's nothing we can do on, as you know, on NOFAs when they're when yeah. it's over. 
It's not a, some of these are not uh, all year programs. The other thing is, um, again, the bank, and we, we can do a better job talking to the banks, but when constituents go into their local banks, we need to make sure they know about our programs. And for USDA, that's one of our huge uh, priorities this year is making sure the lender communities talk about our programs so that constituents know about them. Okay, good. I'd encourage uh, a couple of things. First of all, our website, as we mentioned earlier, uh, either businessusa or sba.gov. But one of the things that, uh, having come from the private sector and having operated a, a small business, I know, and, and as you as you are aware, uh, you're oftentimes worried about your payroll, you're worried about the next project or the next contract, and you feel you know your business, so you oftentimes don't reach out to resources that are available. I know when I was on the private sector side or on the other side of the fence, I always think about the opportunities I might have had to gain from these resources. They are, uh, again, small business development centers that can help you write your business plan, mm -hmm. that can help you market. Uh, there's women's business centers, there's SCORE chapters, all of these resources and procurement technical assistance centers that actually are not an SPA resource partner, they're, they're commerce. But all of these resources are available out there depending on what your business model is. Are you looking to do work with the federal government? Are you looking to export? Are you uh, in need of financing? Or are you in need of a marketing plan or a business plan? Um, but one thing that, that, that sort of bothers me is that uh, there are so many resources out there and the general community is not just is just not aware of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And these are resources that are available for free, right? Yeah. So uh, it's your taxpayer dollars and we want to encourage everybody to make most efficient use uh, of the resources that are out there. Um, sometimes they could be very close. The SBDC could be in your community. Uh, our district office could be in your community. If they're not, Again, I, I, as you mentioned, I would, I would encourage just picking up the phone and calling them. Uh, but be aware of the free resources that are available out there. Uh, and the last thing that I'll mention is, depending on what you want to try to achieve. So before I came to headquarters, I was a regional administrator, and my region was Region 3, Mid-Atlantic. Um, in some districts, um, as an example, if you're looking at federal procurement, uh, it could be the Procurement Technical Assistance Center that was the best resource. But you'd move districts, you'd go to another district, still talking about federal government procurement, but it was the Small Business Development Center. So it does take a little bit of groundwork. It does take a little bit of research. And I understand that as small businesses, we're very busy, and we have other things to do, like me meeting payroll and, and looking for the next project. But a little bit of, uh, of, of homework can really get you to the resources that can go a long way for you. All right. Well, thank you. Well, we're out of time. We had a, you know, we had a great conversation. I think uh, what y'all have provided is going to be very helpful. We'll put some of those phone numbers uh, right. out there so they can contact uh, your office, the SBA or the USDA. I do have to say this real quickly as we wind up is I really appreciate your background, both of y'all, because both of y'all have been what I call in the real world and mm -hmm. in the in the uh, private sector. So I really appreciate this information, this knowledge, experience that both of you bring in. So, John, I want to say thank you so much uh, for being for here, me. and we appreciate the SBA, and certainly Lillian, I want to say thank you, and we appreciate what USDA does. So, again, thank you so much, and to all of y'all, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, capital report. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.